The Radwood 80s and 90s car show is today, and I'm driving this. But wait, I can't go dressed like this. Wardrobe change. All right, let's go. All right, we made it. I'm so excited because there's so many insanely cool cars here. Parked next to my friend Greg, who's got his awesome cabriolet. Oh my gosh, there's so much cool stuff around here. I don't know where to go first. We gotta check everything out. My 1988 Toyota MR2 and it's supercharged. I was really into retro gaming and the whole like taking consoles apart and fixing them. I got pretty good at it. I'm like, well, what's the next step? Working on cars. And I love the 80s styling, all the angles. And I'm looking at different 80s cars to start as a project car. And I came across the MR2 and immediately just it clicked. It was like, oh, that is the one I want. Is this your sort of first this car? This is my first car, yeah. That's a yeah. that's a pretty great first yeah. car. It has <laughs> pop-ups, it's a T-top, it's supercharged. I know it's oversaid, but it it handles like a go-kart. I sure. mean, it's 2,500 pounds. Yeah, it doesn't have a lot of horsepower. It's not fast by modern standards, but just the feeling, the experience of it is just so great. I, I don't know, I just love it. So where did you find it? I found it on Craigslist. I bought it from the original owner. He had it since new. In 2008, he was driving on the freeway and there was an accident on the other side and a tire came and hit the front end of this. And in 2008, it spent 13 months in a body shop and he spent, I think, 12,000 dollars to get it back to where it was oh my yeah. gosh this is basically where it was where i got it all i've done is just upkeep it basically okay yeah because it is one of the nicest looking mr2s from this era that i've seen oh, i appreciate it so i see you brought a few accessories uh, here yes. of course we have a game boy i have a lot more older consoles but that doesn't really make sense i mean i'm at radwood how am i going to play an nes at radwood yeah, you know, exactly. game boy, it's all about portability you got rick astley of course on cassette up front okay I mean, you know never going to give you up <laughs> why not you're never going to give this car up i hope oh, right no 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 okay okay good <laughs> My wife and I brought a 1986 Subaru XT Coupe. This car has a 1.8 liter multi-port fuel injected, 97 whopping horsepower. Okay. Uh, it's front wheel drive. They did come in all wheel drive variants. They also came in turbo variants, yes. but the turbo was only 110 horsepower. Most of what I like it is that it's just so weird. It's just a blast from the past. The styling, the weird steering wheel, the pod mounted controls, it's just weird and different. So my wife bought it in 1986. In 1991 she lent it to her sister and brother-in-law. They drove it for about seven years. Something broke. They had it out on the street for like a year. Every body panel got damaged. The windshield was smashed in. The dashboard was broken into and radio stolen. But we pulled it out in 2018 and restored it. It was my first restoration attempt. It looks great. The reason I bought the car is because I just simply like the styling of it. I saw the commercial and I just loved loved it from the beginning. It didn't matter to me that it wasn't, you know, all that fast or it wasn't a turbo. I just wanted a car that looked like this. It's funny because even back in the day, this was incredibly unique. It's still yes. unique today. And it was polarizing. It yeah. was. I had friends that just thought, well, why did you buy this car? You know, <laughs> they either loved it like I did or I do, or they didn't like it that much. I fell in love with it when I saw the commercial and then thought, okay, I want one. So how did you feel when this was actually all back to where you could actually drive it again? Oh, I broke down and cried. It was so <laughs> emotional. We like cars and I tend to get attached to cars. Okay. I don't like to sell any car. I mean, I've had it for <laughs> all this time. I cried and every time I see it, I just get a little lump in my throat because it's so emotional. It was such a lovely job that Tim did. I mean, he took so much time and it was just really a labor of love. Yeah. As you can imagine, parts are not always easy to find. Sure. <laughs> but it looks amazing. Good job. Thank you very much. I think so. So here's something that I never see anymore. A Mazda 323. It's got some sweet hella fog lights on the front. I love the 323. And yeah, you just never see these anymore. It's really good shape.
Now, if you know me, you know that I'm a fan of forgotten cars and unloved cars. And today, I have found one of those cars, one of those cars that even today sort of just doesn't really look like it belongs in a car show, but I love it because these just don't exist anymore. They didn't sell very many when they were new. Kia Sophia, old, old Kia logo. And that's one of my favorite things about the Radwood Car Show is that you can have a Kia Sophia right next to Lamborghinis and Ferraris. One of my favorite things about Radwood is it brings out cars that you generally don't see at all. And in this case, Volkswagen Corrado. And not one, but four. When was the last time you saw four Volkswagen Corrados together? I think probably the last time that ever happened on the face of the planet was at a car dealership. But that's what you see at Radwood. This is a 1984 Dodge California Shelby Rampage. It was not built at the Shelby plant, so it's considered a Fa Shelby, but nonetheless, this is a factory package. Okay. And there is a window sticker that I have that kind of proves all of this. They I made, believe you. They, had, <laughs> uh, they were going to make 250 of these. They only made 218, okay. and in three different colors. This is Santa Fe Blue. They also offered it in black, and they also offered it in red okay. and they all had the silver striping on it as you see it's a front wheel drive truck it has and you do call it a truck well yeah. it goes back and forth right <laughs> okay. it's vehicle i guess is the best way to do this it's front wheel drive has about 100 horsepower it has a shelby five speed transmission and quick ratio steering and it has the shelby charger front end with their wheels I bought this probably in the late 90s. When I bought it, I just was thought I was buying a regular Rampage. Someone who was a Chrysler guru said, do you know how rare this vehicle is? So I checked it out on the internet and found out that I bought a very special vehicle and I've had it ever since. What drew you to this car? In the early 80s, there was someone that was a supervisor and she had a little rampage. And I thought, well, what a cute little vehicle, right? You could take it to uh, junkyards and you could just put your tools in there and a great junkyarder transportation. But once I found out what I had, I didn't do very much of that. <laughs> this, yes. this vehicle has never been a daily driver. I'm the third owner. It looks amazing. Thank you. Yeah, I try to keep it up because I know how rare the vehicle is. Yeah. Okay, so I've come across what is officially the coolest Volkswagen Scirocco I've ever seen. It's got a Rieger wide body kit on it. Now, anytime I see a Scirocco, I must mention that the worst vehicle that I ever owned was a 1987 Volkswagen Scirocco 16 valve. It was very unreliable. But you know, the crazy thing is I missed that car because it was so unique, it was so cool, it was so fun to drive. So yeah, anytime I see one, I'm like, I kinda want a Scirocco again. And this, without a doubt, is the coolest one I've ever seen. One thing that's kind of funny, seeing the AutoZam AZ1 next to a Miata, it makes the Miata look like a giant SUV. Look at the difference in size between these two things. It makes the Miata look huge. I'm Jake Berg. Uh, I actually work for Acura Public Relations. And I brought with me today my 1997 Acura 2.2 CL with the five speed. And you don't see these very much anymore. No, and especially not in Ohio, which is actually where I bought this one. It was a Texas car for 20 years, and then an Ohio State student brought it up north, and then I bought it. I started our development center there doing technical communication, uh, but bought the car there, and then moved out here for the Acura PR job and brought the car with me. Okay, so why did you buy this car in particular? You know, it was working for Honda and Acura and I needed an Acura and <laughs> I was like, this fits the bill, it's reliable, it's fun, it's a five speed and I've been loving it ever since I bought it like three years ago. And it's very clean, was this the condition that you got it in? So I've had the hood, the front fenders and the bumper resprayed. I also got new headlights and turn signals and I also got the top resprayed oh. and that new windshield but it's probably like three different shades of blue now <laughs> but uh, it all looks really clean no, so I don't look, really mind. It looks great. <laughs> and I heard that you might have something special in the trunk just of this. A little, just a little Can special. Can I just take a quick peek? Yeah, Can we sure. see what's in there? Okay. <laughs> what? There it is. That's impressive. I want one of these. And that's really light, isn't it? It's 40 pounds. 40 pounds, okay. Yeah. 
This is my 1989 Acura Legend that I had for three years. I've seen this vehicle before, and the last time I saw it, it didn't quite look as shiny as it does yeah, now. It was uh, very different and a little bit rough around the edges. Okay. So I had the car repainted, I had a stripe put on, and the spoiler added. So they pretty much just get rid of all the rust too. I mean, okay. stock color, stock rims, just refinished, repainted. So yeah. this is my first car, and I bought it during my uh, high school years. Okay, so this is the first car you ever had? Yep. Yeah, I bought it really cheap. Okay. And it's somewhat nice and needs like quite a bit of work when I first got it. What drew you to this car initially? I was just looking for like the luxury sedans in general from the era like 80s, 90s. I found this car on Craigslist for sale at like 11.49. Oh wow. <laughs> and that... I put way too much money into it. Like... <laughs> Did you put more than 11.49 into it? Oh yeah, uh, <laughs> like a couple times over. <laughs> okay. Another thing that drew me to it is the fact it's a manual. Yeah. Oh, it's a manual. Yeah, which is pretty rare. So I got the car at 228,000 miles and now it's 240. Do you plan on keeping the car for a while? Eh, holding on to it. You just don't really see these for sale in general. Yeah. don't see any of them driving around still. Especially is, this generation. Yeah, kind of forgotten. Yeah. This is my 1990 Honda Civic Wagon. The last time I saw you, you were driving a Prelude. So That's you, right. You still yeah. have that? I just have the Prelude. Well, I love, you know, a nice sporty two-seater. I wanted a kind of a family S vehicle and I've been looking for a wagon. I found this one in San Diego on New Year's Eve and I just had to have it. But the Civic Wagons are always super fun and super versatile. Was it the shape and the functionality that drew you to it? Yeah, it has a lot of fun details like the curb in the rear window. I just love the, the look of it, especially the brown on brown interior. Yes. And the color is called Cappuccino Brown Metallic. So Cappuccino Brown. And it's manual too. It is manual. That was a must have for me. You found a brown wagon Ex manual. Exactly. That is like the holy grail of weird cars. I know and I love it so much. It's just it's such a pleasure to drive and like you say you don't see them too often and so it's just kind of fun to almost time travel when you're behind them. Yes wheel. for sure. Can we check out how much space it's got in the back? It's pretty, it's pretty spacious. And it's funny when you see this you realize this has like a lot more space than modern SUVs. Yeah, I Katie, nice to meet you guys, and I'm excited to join the Radwood show and uh, bring my 94 D21 hardbody Nissan with me. Is this the first Radwood you've been to, or have you been to others? No, this is my first one here. I got recommended by a friend, so I was really excited to go. So when did you buy this truck? How long have you had it? I'm actually the second owner. It was mine back in high school, but he's uh, 1994, and uh, he does his best. Okay, so you're saying he. Does he have a name? His name is Striker, because his original decals were the lightning bolt, oh. and so like lightning strike. Okay, But That's I got him awesome. a new paint job, and I really want to put him back on. That's awesome. So what drew you to this vehicle initially? I like that it's the V6. It's got the 4x4, four four, so it's sure. really good if you want to do some off-roading. The trucks, they just don't make them like they used to. They last a long time. Do you take this thing off-road at all? A little bit. Just some back roads or sand dunes out on the Central Coast. And how many miles does it have right now? It has, I believe, 137,000 miles. Okay. So you said you had this back in high school? Yeah. So what brought you back to Stryker? Well, you know, I have uh, some friends that encouraged me to kind of really get into the car scene like okay. I always wanted to, and so I wanted to kind of restore him a bit, put some okay. uh, TLC back into him and get him back to his glory days. Nice, it looks awesome. Thank Thanks you, for, I really appreciate it. It's a good start. Thanks How much did this cost you? It I was, think it was about like 19,000. Oh, and you saved $1,300 with a I discount know. and value truck Fancy, package. fancy, but that's like a lot in the 90s. Yes. I think it's because it's the four by four. Yeah. And it had like the chrome pack in a couple, but it's only the XE. So like yeah. there's one above it, the SE, yes. that gets like the electric windows and the sunroof. Yeah. But so no, I still got the crank windows. Oh, okay. That's <laughs> I brought a 1990 Vanagon GL. Okay, what makes the GL different from the other Vanagon? You actually have the row of benches. It's actually a minivan. It's not like a Westfalia that you see. You don't have okay. the fridge. You don't have the pop-up tent. The neat thing with the GL, that rear bench turns into a bed. So you can camp in it. I camped in it last weekend. It was okay, great. Okay, that's awesome. Yeah. So what drew you to this vehicle? Were you always interested in Vanagons? Yes, yeah, since I was okay. a kid. I had a, a list of vehicles and I'm slowly crossing them off the list. <laughs> this was one of them always love like older slow practical vehicles there's nothing more practical than a van again you can live in it you, you can, can go live in it. it you can take it to work it gets like 18 miles per gallon okay uh, not bad uh it's a four speed so it's kind of fun you shift around believe it or not kind of peppy uh in town and how is it like on the freeway and that kind of thing 65 70 miles an hour is yeah. kind of the most you want to take it uh, okay. you're hitting about four grand on the tack at 70. with a four speed i wish there was a fifth speed that would be <laughs> great okay and there's your passenger there's my passenger learning about you know vanigans <laughs> 
<laughs> the repair manual and everything. Yes. Oh, and then I've actually never really noticed that there's these seats are kind of like on a little riser. So, I mean, you're actually sitting on top of the wheel. Yes. Uh, you know, Vanigans are so good with space. Underneath here is the battery, and okay. underneath the driver's seat is more storage space. And uh, the gas tank, you're wondering, well, we all know the engine's in the back. The gas tank is actually right here in the middle between the passengers, a nice safe spot in yes. place. Well, I mean, a collision. you do kind of have your legs as the crumple zone, you, right? You sure do. The, so that's why you, you know, drive, the break your fall. Yeah, that's exactly. That's why you drive nice and slow. Yes. I brought a 1988, very unique, uh, very hard to find Cadillac Cimarron. And why did you buy this vehicle? To be honest about it, I spent about 20 years of my life looking for the right Cimarron. I still look for them, even though I have one. <laughs> and I, I spent that much time, and then when this actually came up for sale, it was in Colorado, and a small little dealer had it. I immediately called. I said, I'll take it for the price you want. I said, I'm not even gonna ask you to come down a penny. Yep. I'll take it, let me know when I can come get it. I just need to come from LA. And he's like, well, I gotta do inspection, and I gotta maybe check some things, whatever. So he said, I'll do that Monday. I said, okay, call me. Monday went past, Tuesday went past, so I called him on the, the following Wednesday, and he turned around and he sold the car to someone for cash for less than he was asking. I was not happy, and so a couple of years or a year and a half go by, and I saw this car for sale. I called the person who had it on consignment, and sure enough, it is the same car I tried to buy a year and a half earlier. So I worked out a deal, sadly had to pay more, <laughs> <laughs> okay. but it was the right car, and I had it shipped to my house, and I bought it sight unseen. So obviously, as somebody that's into Cimarron's, I'm guessing that perhaps you have some interest in the history of this vehicle and maybe it being called like the quote worst Cadillac. I mean, I'm kind of wondering what your thoughts on that are and if that's kind of what drew you to this. Well, there's those of us who love them and there's those people who think they're nothing but a piece of junk. To those people who think they're nothing but junk, you need to drive one. It's a much tighter handling vehicle than you would expect. It rides well, but it handles very well. There's a lot of differences on these from a more plebeian J car, right? Sure. The Chevy Cavalier, stuff like that. So big, huge differences, and it makes a huge difference in the way it runs and drives. And this has the, the more unique digital dash. So it's uh -huh. got all the digital gauges and, and dash. That's it for Radwood SoCal. Saw so many crazy, insanely cool cars here today. This is the first Radwood show I've been to in a long time, so I'm really glad to be back. And uh, yeah, it kind of makes me want to get another Rad Era car, even though I probably shouldn't. So we made it back, but I'm excited for a couple of reasons because my Toyota Chaser made it there and back. This is actually probably the most reliable car in my fleet, so I'm not really surprised about that. Um, but you know, I just have terrible luck with cars, so I kind of expect it to break down, and you don't really want to be breaking down while you're like wearing, you know, these pants on the side of the road. I guess I would just have to own it at that point. But yeah, I'm glad I was able to get the Chaser down there. It seemed like a lot of people were into it. It's not a vehicle that you see every day in the United States. And I'm also just super excited because every single time I go to a Radwood car show, I always have so much fun meeting new people People and talking to them and hearing their stories about their vehicles. And one thing that's held true with Radwood shows over the years is that it's always a super eclectic mix of cars. You have a Ferrari Testarossa parked right next to a Chrysler Laser. I mean, what other car show are you gonna see that? The Radwood Car Show is so much fun. I'm super glad that I went. All right, I think that's gonna be it for today. I really have to take off this spandex. Yeah, there's only so long you can wear spandex in one day. All right, thanks so much for watching. I hope you're well and I'll see you soon.